A while ago, I got this message, and this inspired this video. As a matter of fact, a lot of designers misunderstand the usefulness of Figma auto layouts. And in this video, I'm going to try and sort of help you guys understand why it's so important to learn how to use auto layouts properly and what it means to go from design to development if you understand the concepts really, really well. So grab a mouse and keyboard and let's get right into it. In order for us to understand the whole thing, let's clear up a few different concepts. The first one is about this design phenomena, which is actually centered versus visually centered. We have two play buttons over here, one on the left, one on the right. What if I told you that the play symbol on the left is actually centered? So if we zoom into here and I'm going to just change their colors very, very quickly, just so that we could see the, uh, the guides a little bit better. If I was to focus on this, we can have a look over here and you can see that it's perfectly six from the top, six from the bottom and then perfectly eight from the left and eight from the right but it doesn't look centered right and if we do the exact same exercise with the visually centered button it is 10 from the left six from the right six from the top six from the bottom but then when you look at them the one on the left doesn't look centered, the one on the right does. This is due to the shape of the play symbol. So if you do the exact same exercise, but this time with squares. Again, on the left, my square is perfectly centered. So it's eight top, eight left, eight right. On the right, on the other hand, it's the exact same placement as my play symbol, right? So we've got 10 left, eight top, six right, eight bottom. Now you and I can detect this with our human eyes, right? The computer on the other hand doesn't have a way to actually detect what this looks like, if this whether, whether this looks right to you as a human or not. What the computer does, it basically plays with relationships and that's what we're going to explain next. Now let's understand the concept of relationships when it comes to computers, basically on the web browser or even your apps on your on your mobile screen. I've gone ahead and I've put together two elements over here. Let me just go ahead and hide the UI. We have three components over here. I've gone ahead and created some components of icons over here as well, just so that we could swap quickly between the icons at the bottom. At the moment, when we look at everything from left to right, we have three components that are normal frames, or this could also be groups, but I've decided to use frames to build them. And on the right hand side, we have auto layouts, the exact same components, but done in auto layouts. Aside from the normal benefits that you get from auto layouts, like for example, the ability to automatically resize something like this, or the ability to be able to resize from this frame, especially when you do things on a button. So like if I go click here, the button resizes if I was to hide this icon over here, the button resizes itself. Aside from all of these, if I do the exact same thing on this side, that's just not the case, right? These are all manually operated where these are all automated. Aside from that, when you build something in auto layouts, you could rest assured that whatever that you've put together is directly translatable into code. I'm not saying that the stuff on the left is not translatable into code. They are, but they just don't necessarily follow good coding practices. So let me explain. Let's start with this component first. When we look at it over here, it actually kind of looks like because of the shape of this icon and because of the shape of this icon and because of the fact that we got uppercase at the beginning and, and lowercase at the end, it looks like neither the chevron or the icon on the left, the check, is actually centered to the text. But if we go ahead and center everything to this frame, you can see that everything is absolutely centered. Funny enough, if I was to change the icon on the left, if we were to, for example, change the icon to this save icon this looks a lot better right this this looks more centered than what you saw previously when you're doing design and you look at issues like this it's it's very tempting to just grab this text and just move it up just a little bit just to be like yep yeah, all right that that looks pretty centered to me now even for the chevron it's the exact same thing that the, the end of the chevron is now very much centered to the m it's not necessarily to the l but because of the fact that when you see these two close to each other that you you make the relationship between the chevron and the m it kind of looks more centered. Now, the problem with this is, if you were to repeat this exact same component again, and I was to change this icon to something else, so let's go and use our save example. Now this looks like it's, it's a little bit too high, so we might want to move it down a little bit. All right, cool, this is more centered now. But now you've got two components that for you, it only took a couple of seconds to build. However, for your developer, these are two completely two separate pieces of code that they have to write and maintain in the future. When it comes to auto layout though, on the other hand, auto layout doesn't allow you to just move things up or down. There are hacks that you could do. So for example, you could add arbitrary sort of padding to the bottom or the, or the top of this. But technically speaking, auto layouts works on technical relationships 
rather than visual relationships. So what I mean by that is it creates these restrictions where I can only follow the rules of all the layouts. And that's because all the layouts actually follows the rules of Flexbox. And we're going to understand the one-to-one -one relationship between all the layouts and Flexboxes. If I was to create multiples of this and it's a similar component and all I want to do is to just change the icon on the left, I can do so. And these things should just be able to sort of scale as my product scales. This is generally good practice because this is exactly how developers would build your products. Because when it comes to big scale design and build, you want to follow the set and forget rule, which means you, you set something once and you just forget about it. It should just work no matter what you throw at it. So what do I mean by that? As a designer, you can design a component, but you can never guarantee the content of that component, right? So if this component wants to get implemented somewhere and in the future, someone else from your company or from your team or whatever comes in and they want to make a change to this, right? They want to come over here and remove this icon from here. That should work. They want to change this text from click here to get started. Again, that shouldn't break anything. It should, it should just work. And that's what I mean by set and forget. You can, you can never expect what input will be put into here by whoever that uses this, unless you're the only designer and developer on the team. You as a designer just, just need to go away and make sure that your design scales when it needs to. Your design breaks gracefully. Your design can take in as much or as little content as you give it. And again, it just doesn't necessarily break the user experience. And the way to achieve that is to think about your designs in terms of relationship. And what I mean by that is you need to follow the actual positioning rather than visual positioning rule. And that's when you sometimes in some occasions, especially if you're working in a bigger team on products that actually need to scale, the form of your designs needs to follow function and not the other way around. If this looks a little bit off, it is what it is. As long as a user can just basically grab this and use it, you should be fine. Now I've gone ahead and built these exact same things that we've done in all the layouts and of implementing them into code. You don't need to understand how this code works. I just basically want to show you guys how your designs can translate into code. So let's go ahead and just take a closer look. The button and the list item are, 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 are pretty simple components. This would basically grow as I would type something over here. For example, I just go click here. There we go. If I was to get rid of my icon on the right, it does that for me. If I was to go ahead and get rid of my icon on the left, again, it does that for me. I can get rid of both if I wanted to. Does that for me just fine. And we could go back to how it was. It's basically exactly the same here. I can add more text and it makes that change immediately. I could go ahead and change the icon to something else. Again, it does that almost immediately. So you could see no matter what data I would give this, it just works. And everything over here is responsive in relationship to their screen size, which is exactly how we've done our other layouts in Figma. To understand some of these benefits even a little bit more, let's go back to Figma. I'm going to grab this component specifically. Let's change this back to title and subtitle. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it down here and I'm going to draw a frame around it. And we're going to create this into another other layout. And let's just go ahead and do 40 and 40. Change the background color to our neutral zero, I believe it is. Yep. And because we've placed it in here, we're going to now change the relationship to its outer boundary from fixed to fill, just so that it fills whatever space that is available to it, minus the padding. Um, let's just go ahead and change this to container just so that we can see what we're working with. So exactly like my browser, now as I resize the frame over here, my component resizes with it, right? Exactly as you saw right over here. The other benefit is because of the fact that we built this in a relationship format, all I got to do is to basically come over here and let's just say that I want this icon to be centered, not top aligned. I could easily come over here and just select centered align left and it just does that for me. Similarly, stuff like that is available directly from my code as well. So if you come over here and I've got my card and content left items and I'll just have to go to align items and go flex start and just change this to center. And just like that, it immediately changes the relationship to the center rather than the top. We could do flex and and it does it to the bottom. And quite similarly, we can do the exact same thing over here. On top of all that, you could do the same thing with the text. So we could just, you know, align the text to the right. And because of how we set this up, let me just change this back to flex start. And I could just come over here and just change the text align to the right or 
center and it works exactly how this is working on my Figma at the moment. To give you a comparison though, if I actually wanted to go ahead and change the position of the icon in a very specific manner, so for example, two pixels from the top or two pixels from the bottom, then I would have to come over here create another one of these I would have to maybe like name this into cart number two and then I would have to go within my CSS build out another cart number two and then code that very specific cart number two to grab the icon and add two pixels to the top that's just not a scalable way of doing this and as I said you could also never be a hundred percent certain what the user will input into the UIs that you design you want to design your components in a way that it's completely scalable no matter of what input is given into it by the end user that's it i hope you enjoyed this video if you want to download any of these things it's right down below the like button go ahead and download both the code and the figma file and just play around with them again thank you for watching this video i really really appreciate it if you haven't done so already please like and subscribe to this channel and you can find my other social media accounts like linkedin and twitter on aripixel.com and while you're there don't forget to subscribe to my newsletter thanks for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one